Well, good morning and welcome to our worship today on this first Sunday of Lent. As we come to worship in these first days of Lent, we offer our lives afresh to the Lord who promises to be with us and sustain us by the Spirit through whatever lies ahead. Jesus has defeated every power that opposes God's rule. So let us praise God together. Lenten God, we come to you at the beginning of this season, seeking change, seeking renewal, seeking your spirit of transformation to come amongst us. Lenten God, come and move amongst us today as we worship. Amen. I'm going to begin by singing the hymn Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see twas grace that sought my heart to fear and grace my fears really God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. Jesus endured a shameful death that we might draw close to God in shame-free life. So we come to our Saviour 
in gratitude and repentance. We repent of the distance between our anxious thoughts and trusting faith. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We repent of the distance between our harsh words and gentle wisdom. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We repent of the distance between our self-oriented deeds and godly purposed actions. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Here's some words of assurance. God's compassion and love are forever. What God said of Jesus at his baptism, God says to us today. You are my dearly loved children whom I love deeply. God forgives us and loves us dearly, now and forevermore. And so may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. We say the collect. Heavenly Father, your Son battled with the powers of darkness and grew closer to you in the desert. Help us to use these days to grow in wisdom and prayer that we may witness to your saving love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now a summary of our first two readings, uh, which you will hear in a moment. Our first reading is from Genesis 9, 8 to 17. Here God declares an everlasting covenant with Noah and every living being on earth. Never again will the world be overwhelmed by a cataclysmic flood. The rainbow seals God's promise. Then we're going to sing when peace like a river, it is well with my soul. And the second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 18 to 22. Here we find that Christ's death and resurrection have defeated all powers opposing God's rule, enabling our inward transformation through baptism to bring us into God's presence. And then we sing, As the deer pants for the water. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you, for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul 
is well it is well with my soul with my soul it is well it is well with my soul though Satan should buffet though trials should come let the Blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate that has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, all the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, taste the day when the faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul, with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. This morning's second reading is taken from 1 Peter chapter 3, 18 to 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he also went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authority and power made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship. 
worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone will my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire. So we move to our gospel reading. Our gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth in Gal of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. J.J. did tie buckle is an odd sentence, but its wording is significant. 
The sentence is an acronym where each letter stands for a word that needs to be remembered. This acronym was devised for the United States Marine Corps and it helps Marines to keep in mind the 14 traits of their leadership. Justice, judgment, dependability, initiative, decisiveness, tact, integrity, enthusiasm, bearing, unselfishness, courage, knowledge, loyalty and endurance. It's quite a list and no wonder someone devised an acronym as a way of recalling everything on it. Most of us would affirm the value of all those qualities. Business leadership models tend to place greater emphasis on the need for team working, highlighting skills such as delegation, empathy and capacity to inspire alongside vision, creativity and flexibility. I wonder how would Jesus' leadership match these qualities? They are all virtuous traits and perhaps what makes Jesus' leadership distinctive is that we see these qualities in his life as well as his words. But there is a deeper distinguishing factor in Jesus' leadership. His mission springs out of and remains dependent upon his heavenly father to whom he gives all the glory. And within the opening chapter of Mark's gospel, the adult Jesus emerges from the unremarkable village of Nazareth to be baptised by John at the River Jordan. Mark's narrative sets an urgent pace with no lingering over details. It goes to the heart of the drama, the clash of the kingdoms of light and darkness with Jesus in the midst. Jesus has opened up the pathway and removed all the obstacles that lie between us and God's kingdom, enabling us to follow him as Lord into life with God forever. Mark's intense action-packed scenes offer insights into how God's kingdom advances as he presents Jesus' distinctive servant leadership. As Jesus is baptised, Heaven opens up to resound with God's voice expressing deep delight in the beloved Son. Yet this is before Jesus' public ministry has begun. Human beings tend to approve of others because of what they have achieved. Here, Jesus is cherished, not for what he's done, but for who he is in relationship to the Father. Jesus is no self-sufficient military leader, nor an ambitious business executive. He is fundamentally a beloved son. And we might assume that God's commendation and the Spirit's anointing would lead Jesus straight into proclaiming God's kingdom. Instead, the Spirit drives him into the wilderness. Jesus is brought face to face with danger in wild and dark places. Far from being an escape, the Spirit's anointing has equipped him to encounter such vulnerability in faith. Jesus' obedience is honed under opposition and temptation, away from the light, limelight. When he returns to Galilee, this undergirds the clarity, authority and integrity of his kingdom call to repentance and baptism. So as we seek to serve our master, we may be tempted to set store by what we do and have achieved, whether it's spending hours in prayer or what we know or our qualifications and status. Yet the power and energy to minister come from God's spirit and the capacity to go beyond ourselves comes from knowing that we are loved as God's children. Jesus moves forward knowing that he is fully accepted, beloved of the Father. God's gaze upon us 
is as full of love for us as it is at the sight of Jesus. What amazing, what an amazing thing that is. There's nothing we can do to make God love us more. Nothing we can do to make God love us less. And receiving this truth, even though it seems contradictory, only strengthens our desire to serve our Saviour. Perhaps you have had an intense experience of God coming close that has been followed by challenging and difficult times. In such situations, try not to be alarmed. Being in the wilderness is not a punishment. Like Jesus, we may be exposed to temptations, pull, but we are not alone. Angels are sent to be alongside, not to take away our struggles, but to sustain us through them. God never leaves us. As we walk in faith through temptation and danger, we can emerge more grounded and mature in Christ. Our trust in him deepened through the darkness. As we return to lighter times, we will discover a new depth and genuineness in our testimony, our story of God's faithfulness. Now you may be following the Church of England's hashtag Live Lent uh, Lent uh, series and the theme is uh, God's story, our story and this is what it looks like and um, I wonder where are you in your story with God. Now you can download the app of this booklet for free by entering hashtag live Lent God Story Our Story into your app store search box and it'll come up. It's the Church of England uh, website. Um, it's on the Church of England website as well and you can uh, follow the journey of our story being intermingled with God's story. Today, in this booklet, we're invited to take an action for the week. And it says, this week, take time to read one of the synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark or Luke, and reflect on the love that Jesus shows there. And you might like to use a journal or notebook to, re to record your observations. Try and read one of those Gospels and... See and, and uh, note um, the love that Jesus shows us there. I'm getting a bit tongue-tied there, aren't I? But here we go. Um, in the gospel reading today, then, we have heard how Jesus truly realised who he was. Jesus is baptised by John, just like the others who came to John at the River Jordan. But as he comes up from the water, Jesus hears that voice. God's voice saying to him, you are my beloved son. And Jesus then immediately, Mark says, goes into the wilderness where he can explore what that means for him. We sometimes focus very quickly on the three temptations. Mark doesn't even mention them in detail. He says only that he was tempted while he spent 40 days among the wild animals and angels waited on him. In the Bible, Angels are a way of talking about the presence of God. God was with him. And what's truly amazing is that God loves us all like that. We too are God's beloved and valued sons and daughters. When we're in the wilderness, whatever that means and whatever that feels like in our lives, angels wait on us. God is with us. As we begin this years Lent. Think about what it means that you are God's much loved child. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the story of God into which you invite each of us. Help us to understand that story more fully this Lent and to live it out each day. Amen.
And now let us say what we believe in the words of the creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. In full assurance that we are loved and heard, we bring our prayers to our faithful God. As we walk into the long weeks of Lent, we begin a journey into the wilderness. May your spirit rest upon us, Lord. We travel from suffering to hope. We travel through death to new life. As we look to the example of Jesus, who in the wilderness chose the difficult path, help us to know that you are with us. Though the way ahead may be hard and we so often falter and fail, strengthen us for the journey ahead and teach us to trust in you. Your kingdom comes near to those who call on your name. Your pathway is surrounded by love. Teach us to walk in it. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We walk in relative security, thankful for the comforts we know. We pray for people who cannot afford to work from home and ask that we would address the inequality this shows us. We pray for people in homes that are insecure and for people living in life-threatening icy weather in central and southern United States. We give thanks for the peace we experience and ask that our church communities can offer hope and safety and signposts for those in distress. May we share what we have and work to lift the burden that others carry. As we look to the example of Jesus, who embraced all who were in pain, may we reach out to others in generosity and kindness. Your kingdom comes near to those who call on your name. Your pathway is surrounded by love. Teach us to walk in it. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We walk in our troubled world, full of anxiety at the conflict we see in Iraq, in Iran, in the Sahel region, in Myanmar, Somalia and in Yemen. Bring your peace, we pray. We are aware of the infinite resources of our earth. May we limit our destructive habits. As we look to the example of Jesus who lived in simplicity and trust, and as we are asked again to follow him, may we free ourselves from all that holds us back and trust in your promise that you will never leave us. Your kingdom comes near to those who call on your name. Your pathway 
is surrounded by love. Teach us to walk in it. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We walk in separation, apart from friends and those we love. Give us strength to endure in hope. We pray especially for all who are burdened by loneliness, for all who are in pain, for the bereaved and the despairing, the sick and the dying. May we work to make our communities places of warmth and friendship, where all are included and each one finds a place. As we look to the example of Jesus, who welcomed the least and the lost and brought the overlooked into the light, may we extend our circle of belonging and believe that your love is big enough for all to enter in. Your kingdom comes near to those who call on your name. Your pathway is surrounded by love. Teach us to walk in it. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We walk in hope for a future as the rollout of the vaccine continues across the UK and there are signs of success in the data as death rates among over 80s fall. We give thanks for the work of the NHS as they administer vaccines to the public and manage long lists of people needing urgent surgery. May we be mindful of countries yet to begin vaccination and countries who cannot afford the vaccines. And we ask that governments will enable fair distribution. When we begin to emerge from crisis, may we work to build a better world where the poorest are protected. As we look to the example of Jesus, who placed such great value on children, may we create a space where the young can dream again and all of us can grow, rest and be secure. Your kingdom comes near to those who call on your name. Your pathway is surrounded by love. Teach us to walk in it. In your mercy, hear our prayer. In love you made us. In love you call us, in love you lead us through this world, through sorrow and joy, until we see you face to face. Your kingdom comes near to those who call on your name. Your pathway is surrounded by love. Teach us to walk in it. Lord, your heart is full of compassion, your hand strong to save. We commit our concerns to your loving wisdom and mighty power. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so now we share the peace with those who are with us and spiritually to those who cannot be with us. Jesus' sacrifice has brought us a peace with God that we could not earn and that cannot be taken away from us. So let us share it with one another now. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us offer one another and those around as a sign of God's peace.
And now as we bring to God and offer what we have put aside for the work of his church, as actions of grace and love, let us offer our gifts and our lives to God. Living God, we offer you these gifts. We offer you the days and weeks to come. Use us to bless each other, to bless our nearest and dearest, to bless the world around us. May we be a people of transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to sing a Lenten hymn, 40 Days and 40 Nights. days and forty nights you were fasting in the wild forty days and forty nights tempted and yet undefiled The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world 
and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, 
we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so our final hymn is going to be When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And so now may you know that you are blessed by God's unfailing love, that you are saved by the Son through baptism and sustained by the Spirit through the wilderness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Creator God, you made us in your image to be your people wherever we go. This coming week, whatever we experience, wherever we find ourselves, help us to know that you are with us, guiding, revealing and sustaining. Always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.